I've never heard this band before, but they are a pioneer of symphonic metal. <laughs> I'm excited. Ah, I love the choir. Oh, Has that really wobbly vibrato that I feel is synonymous with symphonic metal but I wonder if it started here. That is Fabio Leone and he's actually the lead singer of Angra now I think and Angra an amazing Brazilian metal band and I actually did a reaction to them last week but with Andre Matos. The vibrato is so interesting because it runs the entire way through the note instead of ah, a little bit at the end ah, it goes the whole way through the note and that kind of comes from opera. Now he didn't train in opera but he does love opera so I think that style, that dramatic opera vibrato that helps the sound carry works so well. <laughs> it's so interesting here because he's programmed in the strings on the keyboard. Sounds great, actually. So he's got these really long lines. It's moving very, very smoothly while there's a lot going on in the accompaniment. You've got this amazing string line that's played on the keyboard and he's programmed in the sounds of the violins into the keyboard, which is so cool. If he was moving around as much as all the drums and the guitars and the strings, but he maintains this beautiful melodic line with that big vibrato. It's interesting as well because one of the things that vibrato does is it helps the sound travel more easily in complex acoustic environments. And that basically means in places where there's a lot of stuff or a lot of space where it's a little bit difficult for that sound to travel. So it's really great within this very complex music to have a sound that just cuts through and you can really really cling on to. <laughs> So interesting. It's so strong. Finally. I'm feeling like this is so quintessentially symphonic metal, but yet they are part of defining this sound. It was a combination of Luca Torelli, who is the guitar player here, who is a really interesting guy because he actually really loves trance and electronic music, which I feel like is really different from this, and Alessandro Staropoli, who is the guy you see playing the keyboards, and he writes all the orchestrations after Luca writes the initial song. And they both loved metal and classical music and opera and they wanted to combine all their favourite things and put it into one genre, they did good. Spell, I love how he said that. It's so high as well. So 
almost like a national anthem and I think it really works for metal because metal is such a wonderful community of people and although it's not a specific king I don't think I think it's a story that they've written they've created this kind of community song that everyone can sing along with however there are some wild high notes in the verses yeah look see Yeah, it's in a nice range. I think a lot of people might just about reach it. Ah, not everyone. It's so... it's like a swashbuckling pirate song. I love how he's mixing up these kind of spoken or shouted notes with this big sung operatic sound. I say it's operatic, that vibrato is operatic, but it's a little bit more narrow. He's not doing a covered sound, which is where you lower your larynx and make almost a yawny big open space. It's a little bit more closed at the back, between the back of his tongue and his soft palate, maybe the, the back of his pharynx there. That makes this more direct sound than you would hear perhaps Pavarotti is that bigger warmer sound that you might hear and it's a lovely combination I hope you can all hear that doggy barking away Wild. Yes! I like them. Wild. It's so high and actually people singing along with him there are singing it down the octave because it's so high. That dog's still barking. I love that he's switching it up with those spoken phrases so he's singing all the way through Ah, oh, hey! Those are not the lyrics. You get the idea because it breaks it up a little bit. If you've got that long vibrato, those really beautiful long phrases, that lovely breath support, it's, oh, it's so lovely, going the whole way through, then it's nice just to have a little bit of contrast in there. <laughs> I love the brass. <laughs> it's such a big vibrato. It's funny because you don't have to be on pitch when you have a vibrato that's that big. Our ear kind of hears the pitch somewhere in the middle of that and will estimate where the note is according to what the background music is. So vibrato is a fabulous tool for pitching. I just love seeing this audience. It's like a world anthem for the world that we would like to see. I love the mountains. It's, it's my favourite. Oh. It's so cool leaving it on the audience singing. There's 
so amazing, the sound of that audience. I went to a concert last week and everyone was a bit nervous of singing and it was Keen. I, I really like Keen, I know that it's very different than this. There's something so wonderful when everyone just gets involved with that singing there and I think that audience is just, they're just with it. And it means that it's not just the artist making the music, it's the whole community, it's the whole audience, it's so wonderful. <laughs> So cool. It's like the core of music. I feel like metal has really got it right. I think that we often feel like singing is about status. How good can you be? I don't really believe in the binary good or bad, but why do humans even sing in the first place? Maybe it's for togetherness. Before you go, I have just released my very own album, Fable. It's available here on YouTube some of it and all of it's on Spotify and you can purchase the album on CD or on vinyl at my website bethroars.com. Alright, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed please do like and subscribe. I'm doing Metal Mondays every week and um, I will see you in the next one. Bye. Bye.